long for the tournament. Long low ball into the corner. First chance for Conor Murphy having a strike at the post. We have eight seconds on the clock. Will that one land? His own 65 metre line puts the ball across. First involvement for Tony Layden. Ball breaks down to Conroy. Space opening up inside. He has the strike, but that's a fantastic piece of defensive work. On the 45 metre line, and the ruck develops. And coming in to pick it up, it's the tournament getting the strike away. The hands clap as that ball goes straight between the posts and over the bar underneath. Inter. Chance here for the twin brother Tom. Gets the hand pass away himself. Out it comes towards Cahal Ruan. He has a strike at the post, and this one is measured brilliantly. As it goes straight, finding the space in around the middle third. None more so at the moment than Keen Barron shortening up the grip, looking at the posts and firing it between them as he hit the top of the D. That's a brilliant code. Once again, the tactic is exactly the same. Go as long as possible and look for the hand of Dara Corey. And sometimes hurling can be a very, very simple game. As Corey takes that ball to the left, he's on this touchline at the far side of the pitch, striking over his shoulder. Goalkeeper will have to deal with this one. It's hanging inside around. Uh, can it be picked up inside? It can. It's on time. Or it's uh, Sean Whittacombe that has it on this occasion. Fantastic save just to build this attack. Lovely threaded ball through to David Conroy. Gets the the call to take his men on, he does just that spins around, finds the space and fires a really, really given there but it's picked up and played out here to Brian Clancy, raining up from cornerback shortening the grip on the hurley turning his head sideways to look after that one but again it's going to the left and wide Conroy gets the call inside for Murphy once again but this time he's getting the ball back to the ground, Nagel is trying to get on top but Murphy squirting clear and he's in along the 21 metre line gets the hand pass away to Dara Curry brilliant strike, equally brilliant Brilliant save from Madden. The follow-up goes clear. Matt Sandwich out of the bunker trying to get find David McInerney. Does well. Holds on to it. Stands. Sets his feet. Slaps the this one goalwards and there's no doubt about it it clears the goals and it's St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield on the ball the referee says there's an advantage coming the shot is coming in will it come back for the free there's no need because it's gone between the posts from the man that was just down the line to Jimmy O'Gorman he'll look to go long right down into the danger zone this one goes the hand goes up from Niall Bolton can he get the strike away Bolton going through that's surely a penalty the ball is in the at the moment lead by five points to four a green flag here would make it double scores in Cusick Park Whittacombe comes to strike it and it's gone to the left and wide he did ever just before the tackle came in wonderful ball into space for Connor Murphy to pick up again sells the dummies to Darren Nagel Nagel puts the hand around the neck that'll be a free in for the ball inside for Davy Conroy to run onto goes for the return Conroy didn't spot him maybe he did and just opted to take the point instead but good strong running from Owen Hanrahan sponsors brilliant take once again from Dara Corey soccer hurling he can do it all as he fires it once again and makes the umpire lift the white flag. On a leading St. Joseph's in the first in by Derek Curry coming that little bit deeper. Sharp ball out here to Park McConroy sweeps it all the way across and a late shot. Six. Michael Corbett Menswear, our commentary sponsors. Tom Hannon has the ball back onto the field with that strapping on the head, but it certainly hasn't affected the radar because he has split to perhaps with Keen Barron, who comes down along the right hand channel, jinking inside, striking over the shoulder. It's turning, looping, and twisting over the bar. Well done, Keen Barron. Jack Hannon and now is the man that goes back shortens up the grip pings it outside here to the twin brother he looks at the post but just again it goes to the left hand side of one three Tullamen surround him has to wheel back around here once again trying to put it into the danger zone to Davy Conroy locked down again Conroy picks it up and sticks it over the bar had goal in his mind the first shot was excellently blocked by Paul Lynch but uh, David reacted fastest to the break and swept it over the bar long puck out once again taken out of the clouds this time by David Mack his feet with a come has the free he's just maybe 50 or so yards out from the post standing in this near sideline driving it goalwards and he's got the right hoop on that one as if Tulla coming out on top of it on this occasion David McInerney goes up for it once again flicked on behind him there and it's Sean Whittacombe trying to get it up just can't does now gets the hand pass away whipping on it inside 
Laurie Bolson with the goal. Sean Whittacombe with the little. The centre once again. Ah, oh, just losing the footing there was Hannon. But Conroy, quick as ever, efficient as ever, and clinical as ever as he puts that ball over the bar. That's a big score. It's a little bit more. Fergal Kearney out to Porrick Mulconroy. Conroy switches the point of attack over here to Jimmy O'Gorman. Two Dura Bearfield men around him. Now the help comes from David McInerney. But just, oh, it's not just today, but from many other days besides. This is a high dropping ball and it's an accurate one as well. It goes straight between the posts with consummate ease just here underneath us as Porrick Mulconroy is tackled there by Kean Barron just final and uh, with a man like Quitacombe on the freeze it uh, could prove crucial if things continue as they are there's a beautiful arc on that ball as it tailed inside the left hand upright ball away puck out taken will stay with the play the pick is missed but going back in there to pick it up is Shane Hunt he can't get it at the first time of asking Davy Conroy is there he was pulled to the ground immediate hurling final between Tulla and St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield. 15 points to 112. The goal for Tulla coming through Niall Bolson. At that stage, it put them out into a two point lead. The next two scores came from St. Joseph's. And after that, John, you know, while we were wrapped up in the commentary, very, very excited by all that was happening, in the back of your head, you were thinking, there is going to be nothing to separate these sides. I mean, you know, the response from the goal brought them back level again. After that, it was just turning and twisting and no major surprise that we're still waiting for a winner. No, I, I, as I say, I don't think, I think two point was the biggest lead we'd seen all day, Derek. The game ebbed and flowed and, you know, great honesty from both sides and, and good quality hurling on show as well. Um, big crowd in here and nobody leaving. Uh, you know, I think we eagerly look forward now to extra time. Very hard to call it. I think it could be something very similar. Um these Tulla substitutions that have come on and, and, and delivered scores you know, when they open up in, the, in extra time and delivered scores that will get Tulla over the line. It'll be interesting. It certainly will. Uh, as we wait for the teams to come back out, let's give you an update from the Premier League in the lunchtime kickoff. And we'll get John to talk about this in just a second. Nottingham Forest beating Liverpool by one goal to nil. Uh, elsewhere, the two three o'clock kickoffs, it's Everton 2, Crystal Palace nil, and a Man City leading Brighton by two goals to one. No prizes for guessing who got the goals for City. That game, 15 points to one goal in 12. Tulla eager to get on with it, playing it into the corner. Davy Mack looking across, William Halpin inside underneath it. Up goes the hand, breaks it down to the ground, looks at the goals again. It's going to drop short right in on top of all those attackers inside, and it's a. Uh Coming away with it, trying to pick that ball up is Andrew Canhidi. Well blocked down though. And St. Joseph's will bring it clear. Fionn Kelleher gets the hand pass away to Tom Hannon. Met late. The play will continue. Referee watching inside to see can Rowan get on this one. But Paul Lynch picks it up, facing his own 21-meter line. Half blocked down. O'Neill picks up the break and puts St. Joseph's in front. For once, a defensive slip inside is punished as the half blocked down fell out to Alan O'Neill. He planted his feet on the 21-meter line and arrowed over a 16 point for St. Joseph's who now lead by one. Yeah, great score from Ellen. Uh, great. Into the arms of Paul Madden and once again John a scoring opportunity goes a begging. Yeah, great work by Sean Whittingham and then rushed to shot and he'd be disappointed with that. He should have been slapping that over the bar. David Meehan though wins the puck out and again an aimless class of a ball inside that falls nowhere near where it should. It goes to the left and wide and St. Joseph's stay in front. Yeah, I think that's the fourth way Tull have had now since the start of uh, extra time and, uh, you know, they're going to be costly. They, they need to start putting away these chances. Puck out for Paul Madden in the St. Joseph's goal. There's a conversation happening here underneath us. Not quite sure what has sparked it, but uh, it has come to its conclusion. Madden with the puck out, dropping it between the 65 and 45 metre line. One there by Alan O'Neill. The space is created outside by Don and O'Holloran looking at the posts and splitting them once again. St. Joseph's go two points in front. Alan O'Neill, once again the architect. Donal O'Holloran, the man that finished. 17 points to 112, three to go to the five metre line. And I say standing because it allowed Alan O'Neill to come in and get the hook, the former teammates. And now it's out to Tom Hannon. Could this be a seismic moment in the game? It possibly could. The ball flies between the posts. St. Joseph's lead by three. We'll have a little bit of a stoppage. But John... This extra time period there in a microcosm, David McInerney stands to strike the ball. In comes Alan O'Neill with the hook. And before you know it, the ball's flying between the posts right now at the moment. Important score coming up here now, though, for the Tola men, if they can land it, to stay in touch, bring it back to a manageable kind of a gap. Uh, Whittacombe does just that, John, an important one for them. Very important score for Tola, brings it back down to two. You see Davy McInerney has gone into the full power position. There. Tony Layden gets the hand pass into the centre. Out to Donan O'Holloran. He likes that one. 
turned away the minute he struck it because it went between the posts and over the bar exactly the start they would have wanted the man that was meant to start has made quite the impact two points for Dolan O'Holloran a three point lead once again John from the parish sides in Cusick Park there's four and a half minutes of the second period of extra time gone and that ball is going to go to the left hand side and wide the scoreline stays the same yeah, pulled to the left and wide again. Uh, Sean hasn't had his best of outings in the freeze today. I think he's missed three or four. And um, I suppose it's easy scoring from up here in the commentary box. But, uh, you know, Tulla needed a score there. And unfortunately, from Tulla point of Out once again for uh, Paul Madden inside the Dura Bearfield goal. As we said, that evening sunshine. Now you can see Lance putting the hurlies up to the eyes just to block it out as they try and track the uh, path of that ball. As we watch Sin and Crosby, first involvement for him. He's only off the bench and he has marked it with a score that puts four points between the sides. 20 points for St. Joseph's, 113 for Tulla, four between them. And John, we spoke about perhaps the bench tomorrow, Big Bree, maybe 50 or so yards out from the post, just needs to settle himself, put the memories of those other ones out of his head and land this one between the posts to give them something to aim for in these last couple of moments. And uh, we watch as he does just that. Seems to be struggling with a small bit of cramp down there as well, John, just as he kind of planted his foot to strike that one, it seemed to have an impact. So if your free taker isn't overly comfortable, do you look at changing? Yeah. To come down along the line it goes to Connor Murphy. Ball just flicked away from him, though. A 3v1. He was never going to win that one. Jack Hannon is the man that tidies it, and there's oceans of space on the far side of the pitch for Charlotte Colleran to gallop into, going across the and cut down the angle is Shane Hunt but Charlotte sets the feet strikes a big one goal words and puts it over the bar that's the most relaxed umpire I've seen inside this afternoon the hand stayed in the pocket as he nodded across to the man with the white flag it's 21 points to 115 St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield go back into a three point lead and men from the windswept hill but if the parish can add one more wouldn't it be fitting if it was Davy Conroy to do it maybe he'll create the opportunity for Tom Hannon into the centre of recovery to Sin and Crosby what an impact from Crosby hitting that ball goalwards half blocked as he does though and coming clear with it is Daniel Vaughan he was tackled inside referee leaves it go Kevin Conlon coming clear trying to get his hand free to get the ball away but Owen Ty nips in great work from him back it comes to Matthew Power that could be the one that seals it for the Parrot and it was all about the tenacity of Owen Tyne hunted down Kevin Conlon Turned it over and power did the rest, John. A great score. That should be... Break it up. One hand and finds the other. The twin towers combine. Big long ball played inside. That's a fantastic ball inside to Owen Tyne. Davy Conroy's outside him. Tyne backs himself. Now it goes back to Conroy. He slaps it. Goalwards. It's gone between the posts. It's gone over the bar. Shin Shin Maradershe. Five points between the sides. The puck out taken. Referee is uh, going to say he'll let the play continue. Down along here it comes. Tums and the referee gives the free out. Has he blown the full time whistle? Let's wait and see. They're hugging each other inside underneath us, John. Small bit of confusion. Indeed, the full time whistle has gone. It's St. Joseph's to Ramirez in maybe strange circumstances that sum up the game. They're crowned intermediate champions. They're hugging here underneath us. The parish go back up. The former All Ireland champions are back among the top tier of Clare Hurling. 23 points to 115 after an absorbing, John, absorbing extra time contest. Ah, yeah, tremendous contest, Derek. A tremendous uh, game of hurling. I think you feel for Tulla, the, you know, a uh, great blend of youth and experience. Uh, did that. I'd uh, just like to thank a couple of people. Um, Michael Maher and his crew who prepared the, the pitch here in, in fine order, considering the week we got, considering the last couple of weekends. So thanks to Michael. Stephen and Mick and all the crew here at Cusick Park for, for the work they do week in, week out. Uh, thanks to everyone on, on the sidelines and behind the scenes here as well, our gate checkers, our PR uh, people, and everybody that heads to the games to run off okay. Uh, to Kevin, our referee, and his linesman, um, Fergal Roberts here on the, uh, the fourth official and, and John uh, Bugler, the other linesman. Thanks, lads, and, and, and your team of umpires. Thanks for your, your work and for uh, offici officiating so well today. Uh, to Tulla, I, I know it's a bitter one. Uh, it's hard to lose, especially after being so close and, and uh, being drawn level uh, at the end of normal time. Uh, but you've, you've, a, you've a good team. You've a good, uh, good sprinkling of youth there. So I'm sure we'll see you back here before long again, and, and well done on your performance. Uh, to Dora Bearfield, St. Joseph's, 
Congratulations, hearty congratulations. Uh, they say you, you have to lose one to win one sometimes, and uh, you've lost a couple, so this one was, was well-deserved and hard-earned. Uh, congratulations to, to all of you, to, to Mike Gilfile and, and your team on the sideline as well, and thanks very much for the way you conducted yourselves in recent weeks. We appreciate that in the board. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to ask Shami Conlon, a member of the Dora Bearfield team from 1958, a senior championship winner in 58, uh, and he's going to present the, the trophy to Tom Hannon, the Dora Bearfield captain. Done. <laughs> 